The ocean covers more than 70% of the Earth's surface, with nearly half of the world's population living within 100 kilometers or 60 miles of the coast. Many are at risk of the destructive impacts of storm surges. A storm surge is a change in sea level from the usual predicted tidal water levels driven by weather systems. A positive storm surge can occur with low pressure systems and leads to exceptionally high tides, which can lead to extensive flooding in low-lying coastal regions. While small positive surges occur quite frequently, the potentially more damaging events occur with larger scale, more intense low pressure systems. The most well-known of these are tropical cyclones or hurricanes. The main contributing factor are the high winds that push the seawater towards the coast. It is also possible for a negative storm surge to occur, resulting in abnormally low tides. When the wind direction blows the water away from the coast instead, this causes the sea level to be lower than predicted. These are less dangerous as they do not bring the risk of flooding, but they can damage ships in port and leave them stranded until the water level rises again. Negative surges are particularly problematic in shallow tidal estuaries for large vessels which may have a small underkeel clearance. This affects navigation, as such vessels would not be able to complete their expected route. Another but smaller contribution to the storm surge comes from the low pressure at the centre of the storm. The lower pressure pulls the water level up by about one centimetre for every one hectopascal fall in pressure away from the 1,013 hectopascal standard sea level air pressure. For example, a deep depression with a central pressure of about 960 hectopascals would result in an approximate sea level rise of 50 centimetres. This is the inverse barometer effect and is similar to what happens when you drink through a straw. As the wind blows over the ocean's surface, it exerts a frictional force that drags the top layers of water with it. This is known as Ekman transport. Due to the Earth's rotation and the Coriolis force, this wind-driven surface flow moves at an angle of 45 degrees to the right of the wind in the Northern Hemisphere and 45 degrees to the left in the Southern Hemisphere. Each successive layer moves at a greater angle but at a slower speed, creating an Ekman spiral that extends up to 500 feet below the surface. The result of this is a net transport of water to the right in the northern hemisphere of the wind direction. When this movement brings the wind-driven water into more perpendicular contact with the shore, it can amplify the surge. And when it bends away from the shore, it has the effect of lessening the surge. In addition, positive surges are affected by the shape and depth of the sea floor and coastal area. A lower surge occurs with a narrow continental shelf where deep water is close to the shoreline. A higher surge occurs with a wide continental shelf where there is a shallow slope of the sea floor up to the shoreline. The shallow depth of the offshore continental shelf in the Gulf of Mexico contributed to the high storm surge brought by Hurricane Katrina in 2005. This storm devastated coastal areas of Alabama, Louisiana and Mississippi with a surge height of more than 8 metres, 26 feet, in places. Reaching up to 12 miles inland, this led to widespread flooding, including almost all of the city of New Orleans, and resulted in around 1,800 deaths. The storm surge from Hurricane Katrina caused $125 billion in damage, making it one of the costliest hurricanes on record. However, the 1970 Bola cyclone caused a 10 metre or 33 feet high storm surge at the Ganges Delta. With over 500,000 lives lost due to the surge, this was the deadliest tropical cyclone on record. Storm surges may be more commonly associated with tropical cyclones or hurricanes, but they can occur with any intense low pressure system. The UK experiences many storm surges and, perhaps surprisingly, it is the east coast that has the potential to experience significant or severe coastal flooding. However, it is only when a large positive surge coincides with high tidal levels that extreme flooding can occur. On the night of 31st of January 1953, an intense low pressure system moved in from the Atlantic, passed close to the north of Scotland, then veered southeastwards into the North Sea. 
This generated an external surge, taking a lobe of increased water depth from the North Atlantic, forcing it into the North Sea. This positive surge from this weather system also coincided with a high spring tide. The shape of the North Sea coastline amplified the storm waters as it was funneled towards narrower and shallower parts in the south. This resulted in a surge height that was over 2 metres, 6 feet, as well as waves of over 8 metres. Most sea defences facing the surge were overwhelmed, which brought devastating floods to the many adjacent low-lying parts of Scotland, the east coast of England, northwest Belgium and the Netherlands. Alongside improved sea defences and warning systems that were instigated after this event, the Thames Barrier officially opened on the 8th of May 1984. It is the world's second largest movable flood barrier, spanning 520 metres across the River Thames near Woolwich. When needed, its 10 steel gates are raised, reaching as high as a five-storey building, preventing potential catastrophe if London were to be flooded by surges from the North Sea. In early December 2013, a similar scale storm surge to that 60 years prior hit the east coast of the UK. This time, improved flood defences and early warnings helped save lives and minimise damage compared to 1953, meaning that our coasts and estuaries are safer now than they have ever been.